Uh, my name is Tom Atkinson. Um, I'm the GBC coordinator, and I've been involved with Great Ball Contraption almost since its inception, and uh, I'm, I'm a hooked on it big time. Uh, this is now, as best I know, this is a new North American record. We have more modules in one place than we've ever had anywhere in North America. Some of these modules have been around for a while. Like the one you're looking at now is uh, been about eight years. That one's been around. Um, this wave module is actually originally designed by Philo from France, and he is shortly after they came out with the spec. He created a whole bunch of modules and kind of blew everybody away in terms of how quick he got things done. After that is kind of the beginning of the modules that were made at, at this uh, build workshop. And there's a whole bunch of them. And people use their own colors, some they've decorated. This pink module is definitely one of my favorites of this group. Um, just because pink and GBC don't seem to happen very often. You don't see that combination very often. No, not at all. <laughs> um, and it's just somebody got very creative with the greenery here. Uh, and, and that's the kind of thing we like to see. Even though all these modules were all basically the same when they started, you can see that the variety that we have now is just, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. So as we walk down here, we get into some, some different kind of mechanisms. Um, there's lifting and twisting and turning and spinning and ramps and more and more conveyor systems. And we get down to a couple of modules here um, that, are, that are very decorated. And I encourage this kind of thing. Mechanically, it's doing something interesting, but it's also very pretty. <laughs> uh, let's see, what if we got a, a, a push style of module? And then after that one, we get into this really complicated mechanical train system where the entire thing is actually driven by the trains. Uh, so there's a motor and battery pack in each one of these trains. And when it gets to the end station, it automatically, mechanically flips so that the train stops and the motor drives the mechanisms at the end, which is a, a very cool thing. That concept was actually borrowed from one of our favorite GBC builders from Japan, named Akiyuki. Uh, he's he's our hero. <laughs> uh, so then we get into we got an interesting one where GBC is the word here. <laughs> Very nice. It spells out GBC right there. Yeah, that I, I like that one. Uh, and then we have um, different, more different mechanisms, rotating belt balls on the inside and then this one's really kind of cool in that it's driven by a three-pronged gear you can see the side view of it it's a, it's a neat idea and it works very well um, after that we get another module that, that runs in slow motion it's got parallel things to keep it up with the rate of one ball per second which is uh, what the whole thing is supposed to run at then we have a very colorful, looks like it was built like by a kid kind of module. This is the embodiment of Lego, you know, the bright colors. The Rainbow Warrior module. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of old school, the kind of way I think of this module. And we have, um, this is another thing that's a little unique, is we have a small module here which uses Duplo. And Duplo doesn't show up very often in Great Ball Contraption either. But uh, we're, we're trying to change that. We have a small Ferris wheel that scoops up the balls and takes them around. Uh, we have more conveyor systems. And we get into some more very colorful modules. And I'm sure your audio is starting to pick up the fact that I have a module failing down there that I probably need to go pay attention to. But that's all right. It's moving working now, so okay. I'll keep going. Um, very colorful, interesting concept of having this rotating plat this wobbling platform with holes in it. Uh, it's kind of interesting to watch the balls there. We move on to another conveyor one. Actually, this one's one of the ones from our build yesterday. And we have a push module. Slow, but it takes bunches of balls at a time. And then we have this giant Ferris wheel, which is 
really, from a Technic point of view, a 360 tooth gear. Wow. Uh, so as you can see, that this is these are the the teeth, and it's driven by an old fashioned, the old Samsonite gears back from the 60s. <laughs> so, going around. Very cool. And we have some uh, a different one that's based on a raising platform going up and down, so the balls roll in and the platform lifts and they roll out. The next module is a pneumatic module. Uh, the, you can see this little motor down there is running at 500 miles an hour. It, all it's doing is compressing air. The rest of it is all based on that compressed air okay. with switches and, and pneumatic cylinders running it. Then we move on to this jump this uh, shooting module. This one here, you gotta watch out, it's sh shooting them up in the air. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, I have gotten beamed off the head <laughs> with the ball before, and it does hurt if you're really too close to it. Uh, this is my personal oldest module. Um, it was at the Brick Fest 2005. Uh, <laughs> Very cool. So that's, so that's, yeah, about 10 years old now then, almost. Yeah, next year, we're working on next year, calling next year the 10th anniversary. Okay. We're going to be doing special things yet to be defined. <laughs> um, this is another module divine, designed by Philo that has been recreated. Uh, and then we have a high-speed conveyor belt. And we move on to another one that um, is, has the colors. And I, the, the colors of this is, I made this as a prototype. And I don't care about color when I make it as a prototype. But it's working well enough, I've never had to rebuild it yet okay, into the real the module. Yeah, I will eventually, but priorities. Uh, this one jumps, and I get asked all the time, oh, that one's doing something funky. The jumping actually keeps jams from happening, So, and, it, and it's by design, okay, yeah. <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, and then, then we move on to one that is, um, I, this has been called the Salmon Run, and it was named by uh, an attendee, I mean a... Uh, a public person uh, several years ago because it looked like a salmon run. Of course, now we have no balls, and I don't know why. Uh, you want to pause a second? I'll get more balls. Okay, so go grab some more balls real quick. Come around here. They got to <laughs> gotta make sure it keeps going with the balls. There you go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, okay, so this is Salmon Run, and it's basically a, a small version of the the big popper over there. Just four of them all kind of sync together, and that brings us around the corner uh, to a small, simple module, which just passes it on. This is um, a very interesting concept here, where the actual movement is uh, was done by Akiyuki and was copied by Steve Hassenplug. The interesting thing about this module is um, he took a box and built a frame that fit nicely in the box and built the entire module inside it. So when he's done, he just goes whoop and drops the whole thing in the box and he's good. Okay, yeah. Very up? clever design. Uh, these actually function as a train station, although in this case I'm just using it. We'll get to that later. I'm using just this as a, a module to pass the balls on. Um, and we have a uh, simple conveyor, and we move on to uh, something that, that pumps the balls up and down using a mechanical mechanism to flip an electric switch to reverse the motor. Move. Moving on to a pretty complicated set of conveyors, one vertical, one semi-horizontal, uh, and it's interesting to watch the balls flow, flow through this. Uh, from there, we move on to um, a slightly slanted scoop. So if this was straight up, this wouldn't work. But because of the angle, the balls stay there and they move on. This module, like like several, has the ability to circulate the ball. So if we get into trouble with the module afterwards, we can put this in circulate mode so that it holds the balls up for a couple of seconds while we repair this, which is a problem. Uh, repair is always an issue. And then um, after this module, which is a very small stepper kind of thing, 
Uh, we move into, um, this module is controlled by an NXT, and it basically, through a combination of a, a switch and uh, rotation, it knows when to start and stop to allow the balls to roll in and then roll back out. And then we move on to a very mesmerizing spiral. Don't look at that for too long, it, you'll just get lost in it. And then from there, uh, another, this is kind of a, a, he took Steve's idea of the build it in a box thing and made his own different style of module inside. And um, it's definitely different. The balls can go multiple paths. When they come down, they hit things that, you know, flip one way, then the other, and then another set of those. So that there's four different paths the balls can go. They all end up coming out, the one out. And then move on to a, uh, a a different version of the a stepper where it's a dual stepper kind of module, and those dump into a small minimal minimal size module. This is as small a module as you can make. It's just the size of an input pin, and that just makes it go around the corner and onto this internal spiral. And the really you need to get a shot down here because that's the best view of this module. <laughs> Um, it really is kind of cool looking, looking down there, seeing the balls roll up. From there, we move on to uh, another fairly old module. This one's been around for a long time. Low stepper. Uh, we move on to a, a conveyor made, out of, built out of brick, so that it, out of Technic pieces, rather than using the chain or the um, or the tread, sure. it's made. It's built. It's brick built chain <laughs> and from there we move on to another uh, stepper type module um, <clears throat> a series of uh, prototype modules that led to the kit that was used for the uh, the workshop build so and as you can see one of the, the neat things about this is we have three actual modules that are sh that share the power of one motor uh, which is an interesting concept, and we will be working further on that one. <laughs> and then uh, there's another uh, stepper module, which then dumps into, and, and this I will explain, this is a uh, train station that has the ability to um, pass balls through normally, like a, a standard module, or uh, it can pump, excuse me, pump the balls up to the top here, and store some here until this train comes along. Okay. And the train comes along and sees that this is in, it stops, and then the NXT in the train talks to the RCX in the train station to determine whether it should drop balls off, pick balls up, and when all is said and done, which direction to leave the station. Okay, wow, that's awesome how you worked that all out. Very cool. From here, this whole section is not Lego, and I'm not qualified to talk about that. And you guys can interview these guys if you want, or we can just skip okay. ahead. We can, uh, well, we can go ahead and skip ahead for you to finish out, and then we, okay. we can come back. And talk yes. So at the other end of this, I have another train station um, that, that, you know, we did this so that we can say, we can run this in Lego mode only, uh, so that the train can bypass the non-Lego. <laughs> Just to keep it a valid yeah. Lego GBC for the purposes of making a new North American record. Uh, and then from there we, we move into a, a counter, which is basically driven by two NXTs. Um, the neat feature I, I built into this one is that each digit is on its own motor, so I can stop and save the count and then shut it all off and come back tomorrow and restore the count. Okay. That was a feature for that. From there we move into uh, a, a, a wheel that basically raises the balls up, drops it into this um, really, really tall uh, <laughs> ramp. And the, the gentleman who made this seems to like to make extra large modules, without mentioning any names, Thomas. Um, and uh, he always brings something that is just beyond the scale of what we're normally dealing with. And the amazing thing is that this came in a suitcase. Okay. Yeah. It yeah. breaks down then? Oh, yeah. And uh, he's pretty good about 
he knows how to pack massive modules into a suitcase. So from there, the balls drop down, and we go down to a, a kind of a small flipper that flips them up into another rotating type of mechanism, and then onto a small conveyor that goes across a ramp which serves as our doorway. So this whole piece comes out so that we can get in and out without having to crawl underneath. And the interesting thing about it is that when he lifts it, it automatically shuts off the conveyor so that the balls don't go under the floor. <laughs> yep. Even though some hit the floor anyway. So, and then a little pump and we're back to where we started. You guys count? Because I didn't. I don't know. That's a lot of modules you got going on there. That's awesome. I think we're pretty close to 80. I, there, we did an unofficial count yesterday, but then some changes were made, so we have not done an official count today to see where we really are at. Uh, we will, uh, but I know we're so far ahead of where we are, our North American record prior that I know we got a new record here. So Very there cool. it is, that's the whole thing. So now, uh, how long does it usually take you to, as you work on an idea for a module, how long does it usually take you to build one of these? That can be anywhere from, I, there's, I had a concept to build a simple module just that just had a simple up and down. It took me about two hours start to finish, including some testing, uh, to say the Ferris wheel or the shooter where I probably invested a couple hundred hours to get the thing working reliably enough to, to actually use. Reliability is, is really important and there's a lot of testing uh, to, to, to kind of weed out the problems. Even Even then, this is all about learning. If you have a module that's acting a little weird, you just observe it, observe it, and see what you can do to improve it, and take it home and improve it for the next time. Uh, the, it, it, it's constantly being improved, and it's a good thing because as we're constantly growing, if we weren't improving, then it, things would be broken all the time. And the fact that I can walk you around this whole thing without somebody running over and saying, Tom, 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 this is broken, is, a, is, is evidence of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely takes a lot of testing to make sure you get it all worked out, but I think you did a good job here. It looks like it's going pretty smoothly. Got a real, lot of really cool modules, so I appreciate you taking us around. Thank you. This has been fun. <laughs>